बिकॉज आइसक्रीम नीड्स टू बी देयर एट अ सर्टन टेम्परेचर इट इज एक्सट्रीमली हार्ड for you to build a national distribution of ice cream it's a complete dynamic shift in 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 trend 99% of their business was actually coming from gt which is your kirana stores which is uh, as you said mom and pop stores and just 1% of business was actually coming from modern trade it's unbelievable the sort of expansion that uh, has been happening on quick commerce and how it's translating into massive sales uh, for the incoming players on these platforms the large majority of your sales is now coming from quick commerce the most common go to market strategies of most ice cream brands right uh, is something called as in today's episode we'll discuss the indian ice cream market um how new guilt free players are disrupting uh, the traditional players in india and the growth strategy of these new players so with that said let's perspectiveify the shit out of this so the ice cream market in india is a very interesting story right so just to give you a brief background currently the overall ice cream market is valued at approximately 3 billion dollars and is projected to grow at around 13 and a half percent and the indian ice cream market is actually being grown primarily because of disposable income and a better consumer preferences for their indulgent treats right and owing to the weather uh, of uh, of india ice cream becomes the default option for people to go towards right so what's interesting is that there are approximately four or five major national player in this market uh, the first is amul of course the second is huls quality worlds cream bell uh, wadi lal etc the fun fact is that wadi lal is the only indian company which does mm. ice cream and is publicly listed in the stock market as well otherwise all mm. other players all other major players like quality walls amul ice cream all of these are part of larger corporates right mm. uh, mm. i think drove maybe you can uh, talk about why this sector is growing so fast in india yeah absolutely right Uh, I think a very interesting thing a lot of people don't know about the Indian ice cream market is that the average per capita per year consumption uh, of ice cream stands at around 300 to 400 ml right um but on the other hand if you see the the same statistic on in the US market that that's a whopping 22 liters right wow. so 304 to 400 ml to 22 liters Why do you think the uh, the consumption in India is so it's it's so much lesser than than Western countries? I guess probably because we have like uh, other forms of of sweets which are like more uh, more available. Exactly, exactly. You you you're absolutely on point, right? The mithai market uh, is also significantly large, right? Whereas hmm. in Western countries, uh, ice cream is like the go-to indulgent, you know, treat. Hmm. so you could think of it as you know a lot i mean the market uh, has a lot of scope for expansion simply because hmm. i mean to be very honest a lot of the new generation people right like, like me and you i don't think we are very big time consumers of mithai obviously i love my uh, you know monthly rasmalai but but i think i'm also starting to gravitate a lot more to you know ice creams in general or like the western style of desserts right hmm. Hmm. Uh, which which i feel is is probably going to drive a lot lot of um you know expansion uh in the ice cream market uh going forward absolutely and i think uh, the reason why the ice cream consumption uh is so low as compared to say your mithai or or other parts is because from a, and and we'll discuss it when we discuss the logistics of the ice cream business is primarily because mithai is available at every maybe 500 to 500 meters to a kilometer of your home right the, there are a lot of physical locations or uh, and uh, local Correct. players in this market which are essentially uh, uh, due to which the mithai consumption is so much more that penetration of um, of ice cream has just started to happen uh in 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 india because of quick commerce beca- yes. because of the overall betterment of the cold chain logistics and you know adding on to that i feel like you rightly said that uh you know ice cream uh is is largely 
it's it's not a need it's it's a want right yeah, yeah. so it's like a you could say it's not a luxury product in, in in any sense but it's obviously an indulgence product right exactly and indulgence will usually happen only once you know you have a good amount of disposable income right yeah um which which is why you know i think we drop pop up a quick uh, screen grab on the on, on the video uh but the disposable income of indians have also has also been increasing significantly over the years and uh, due to which i think uh, it, it's pretty clear that the ice cream market should be going uh, should be growing fairly well so uh before we get deeper into the cold chain logistics and uh, how this growth will happen uh what we need to understand is uh, how do we divide the ice cream market into various segments right so if you look at the ice cream market on an overall level you can broadly divide it into four segments the first is your impulse ice cream the second is your take home dairy ice cream the third is artisanal ice cream and the fourth is single portion dairy ice cream let me talk a little bit more about these uh, four types of uh, segments right So the first is uh, your impulse ice cream it basically refers to ice cream products that are typically purchased uh, on impulse rather than a uh, part of a planned shopping trip what that essentially means is that whenever you're traveling from let's say delhi to um, i don't know jaipur or or you're traveling uh, with your family or or with your parents and then you're like yaar it's it's too hot i want some some kind of an ice cream right so you're just you're just looking for that ice cream cart or that ice cream van uh, which is available in like every single uh, uh, part of like cities right so you just go and you grab like a cornito or you grab some kind of an ice cream so those are the kind of impulse products which are available at just uh, when you think about it and you get it instantly right the second is your take home dairy ice cream uh what that essentially means is that these are your family packs right you obviously get those family packs because either there is an event happening at your home or there is some kind of a planned approach to that right a planned approach to getting that brick into your house either for for your own consumption or for a party consumption etc right the third is artisanal ice cream these are generally like ice cream parlors uh, you have apsara mm-hmm. ice cream parlors you have baskin robbins mm-hmm. uh, ice cream parlors mm-hmm. all of those would constitute basically of your artisanal ice cream market which is great for like uh, for for a, a restaurant business and all of those things but it's really hard to scale uh, beyond a 50 or a 100 crores in revenue because it has logistical uh, slash uh, real right. estate cost attached to it right and then finally you have the single portion ice cream uh these are like small uh one time consumption ice cream and and this is pro- uh, broadly the kind of ice cream which we consume on a day on day basis or on an impulse basis you can say uh, like whenever i think of a choco bar i go to an ice cream stall and get a choco bar from myself that's a single portion that's just for me that's not for anyone else and and yeah you're using that among these four types right the impulse ice cream market uh and the single portion dairy ice cream is probably the largest uh segment amongst all of these things mm-hmm. right uh mm-hmm. it, and it is not primarily because ice cream is a food business but because it's 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 a very very hard logistical business that you need to crack right what i mean mm-hmm. by that is that because ice cream needs to be there at a certain temperature right it is extremely hard for you to build a national distribution of ice cream right and this is exactly why you have a lot of regional players uh, in 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 every city for example i am from uh, jodhpur rajasthan there are a couple of local ice cream shops which are really good but have not managed to scale to say a delhi or a, or a gurgaon or something like mm. that right and and because uh, there is a huge logistical cost attached to uh building a distribution network uh, it becomes kind of like an entry barrier for these local players to come into uh come into national distribution a uh, fun fact uh, do you know have more yeah i have heard of have more yeah so have more till about 7 8 years back before it was actually sold to lotti was just available mm. in Rajasthan and Gujarat 
and this was one of mm-hmm. the largest ice cream players in the market it wasn't it wasn't available in say uh, uh, a delhi uh, and and all the level of distribution has happened because it was bought over by lotti and they have spent extensive amount of money building the a uh, cold chain infrastructure and the distribution center and and this is why today have more is competing uh, head on with the uh, players like quality walls and stuff like that so now you know delving into the distribution as- aspect of the ice cream market right um now the most common go to market strategies of most ice cream brands right uh, is something called as gtmt now this was something i personally did not know what exactly stood for so for the people who do, who who were probably like me it, it refers to general trade and modern trade um general trade specific specifically referring to things like grocery stores convenience stores uh, your regular mom and shops uh, mom and pop shops right um and modern trade primarily consisting of a uh, big department stores supermarkets and all the more novel you know aggregator uh, avenues for you know brand selling so that's that's basically what you know is the is the most uh, common way of distributing ice cream and obviously we know you know the common you know parlors etc where we probably go to have ice cream in general um now you know we shift this discussion to more of the guilt free ice cream market right because that's what is is largely disrupting um the 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 more conventional players in the industry right so we have companies like go zero we have companies like getaway right which are essentially offering a health conscious alternative to traditional ice cream forms in fact i recently even uh, you know tried out a few of the you know kind of flavors and i was pleasantly surprised that it it felt entirely like ice cream but it was i think it did not have it didn't actually have any sugar uh, which was really surprising to me right so you know rakshit i was listening to kiran shah's podcast so kiran shah is the is the founder of uh, go zero which again is a guilt free ice cream brand uh, which started very recently i think 2020 2020 or 2021 and you know uh, what's interesting uh, rakshit here is that um, kiran actually used to work at another ice cream player called apsara ice creams before he started go zero um, and the insight here was that your business uh, for apsara uh, almost 40 to 50% of that was actually coming from online platforms like stuff like swiggy and zomato right where you directly order from the store itself uh which which was uh, particularly interesting for me because i thought people were still consuming ice cream largely offline hmm. but it's interesting to see the trend shifting towards a uh, more hmm. of an online first approach hmm. what you also need to realize is that uh, apsara was actually uh, not a d2c brand right it was uh, it was kind of like a restaurant business so you would expect people to not sort of come to the restaurant but as the behavior hmm. changed from going to a restaurant to uh ordering from the restaurant right i think that played that trend and as a result more of their sales eventually started coming from online first approach but the good thing about here was that it made people comfortable uh about buying ice cream uh, online and with that inside in place right akshit uh the new players like again go zero uh, getaway all these players have turned to a very very online first model right mm. because i think it was it was significantly clear that people there is a market that can can be captured through uh, you know d- uh, digital means yeah. and now the new players are actually leveraging uh, you know plat uh, uh, you know platforms like quick commerce which is which is a beautiful beautiful addition to the whole ice cream game uh, to actually build a uh, you know an online first uh, model that's actually a very counter intuitive uh, move because uh, if you look at the overall ice cream market right i think about uh, 99% uh, of their business uh, if you leave out the last 3 4 years of quick commerce if you compared the last let's say uh two decades of ice cream business what you'll realize is that 99% of their business was actually coming from gt which is your kirana stores which is uh, as you said mom and pop stores and just 1% of business was actually coming from modern trade which is very if you think about it it's it's a very 
hard pill to digest because of the fact that yeah. you would expect modern trade to contribute more than 1% of your sales because you are attracting yeah. more higher disposable income people into the market but what you'll realize is that in ice cream doesn't matter if you're driving a mercedes or driving a bicycle you'll buy wherever it's convenient to buy right and mm-hmm. this is what essentially changed with the whole quick commerce wave because suddenly you had these people who were high disposable income people i think for these players quick commerce is a perfect strategy is because first of all i don't think they can spend a lot of money building logistics uh, and solving for logistics on a national level right uh, and going to modern trade as i said con- will contribute to just 1% of your business so uh, doesn't really move the needle but what happens with quick commerce is that you get a high level of disposable income people who will per- who will likely purchase those slightly higher price products because these players are not cheap right they're like almost 10 times more expensive than your average choco bar or your average uh, ice cream right so you get high disposable income but at the same time you have this same level of impulse uh, which these players can help you with what i mean by that is that uh, because you get it in 10 minutes or you get it in like less than 10 minutes you're more likely to sort of it it meets your impulse needs because rather than going to a, a a nearby kirana shop you would rather order it from quick commerce players yeah absolutely i mean just thinking back to you know few uh, stories in my lifetime i think whenever i've craved an ice cream it's always that factor ki yaar am i lazy am i lazy uh, whether to go to the parlor or not yeah, right yeah, but now yeah. if you have it at the click of a button right uh, yeah, on your phone yeah. it uh, significantly impacts uh, you know consumer behaviors in general right yeah. uh, so i think it's a, it's an entirely new like category creation in in that sense right that it's 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 a complete dynamic shift in 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 trend so if you look at the channel distribution and the sales that is coming from these channels right what you'll realize is that almost like 75 to 80% of their business is actually now coming from uh, quick commerce uh, which is like 10 SKUs 8 to 10 SKUs per company and 20% is now just coming from Swiggy and Zomato right now that's a perfect transition to our uh, second growth lever which is uh, quick commerce right um now very interesting thing i found from the research done by bear and company uh, which is that quick commerce uh, now accounts for 40 to 50% of grocery spending in india and remember this is not just ice cream it is actually grocery spending which means i mean you could potentially say that a lot of business for your uh, you know general trade stores has been you know pretty much uh, killed off yeah. uh, simply because of the the shift in consumer trends um and uh, obviously right with with the same logic i mean go zero get away etc uh, all the new all these uh, guildfit players have been going very very heavy on uh, on platforms like blinkit zepto instamart um, you know it, it, there's been a lot of lot of focus on these platforms um a very interesting case study that i was actually listening to from kiran shah's uh, you know podcast um, was that they have a product which is uh, a mango duet right now mango duet of course all of us know the traditional you know vanilla inside mango you know layer outside right a very nostalgic product for a lot of us uh, for a lot of people so so they launched this mango duet sku on uh, blinkit in jan 2024 um and at that point in time just on blinkit right they actually sold 2000 units uh something that is mind boggling is that as uh, in may 2024 which is barely i think 5 months down the line they actually sold 60000 units of that product with not a lot of extensive marketing again this is just platform based uh, increase in sales uh, which is which is unbelievable for for that to go up to such a significant number just because uh, there's obviously significant growth on blinkit also right and yeah. in case you want to know about blinkit's growth we've also done a podcast on that which we'll obviously drop the link in the description but but it's unbelievable the sort of expansion that uh, has been happening on quick commerce and how it's translating into massive sales uh, for the incoming players on these platforms another thing that you know comes to the mind of most people listening to this bit is that yaar why are people i mean one is that 2000 to 60k units within a 5 month period is amazing but how come people are actually willingly spending 
you know, 5x, pretty much 5x the price for, you know, going from, let's say, 20 rupees to 125 rupees for a single unit, hmm. right? And we actually spoke to someone from the Go Zero team who, who told us a very key insight, you know, that uh, when people are shifting away from in a purely indulgence, uh, you know, sort of experience, which is your normal sugary ice creams to a health conscious ice cream experience, uh, which the guilt free players are offering, they're actually more than willing to pay that premium hmm. without actually worrying about, oh, you know, you know, this is like five X the price, right? And yeah. I feel like that that is that that actually makes a lot of sense. Um, even for, you know, me or you who probably are consuming any health conscious uh, brand, supplements, etc. Yeah. Uh, yeah. that we are willing to pay the pay the uh, pay the premium simply because, you know, we want to have that uh, that that organic, that health conscious experience. And I think uh, just moving on to the last uh, lever of uh, growth for these uh, brands, uh, which is again, partnerships uh, with the quick commerce platforms. Again, we're going to separately bucket this uh, because this is essentially, this is a more of a marketing initiative than just launching your product on these platforms, right? Now, again, in the case of GoZero, you know, they uh, they'd actually launched uh, an exclusive hazelnut bar in collaboration with the Zepto team, right? Now, this is extremely interesting simply because i feel like with the expansion of you know let's say go zero and especially the expansion of platforms like zepto which again recently secured a funding round i feel it's the perfect time where if you can collaborate and launch an exclusive product there's a lot you can gain out of it right yeah um it's like you can think of it this way right if i want to try a, a go zero exclusive ice cream in in my case i'm a very frequent user of blinkit uh, or even instamart for that matter but i don't use zepto but let's say i heard about let's say you know this hazelnut ice cream from from let's say rakshit and uh, i decide kya meko try to karna hai so i am going and downloading zepto's app right so i got you know a download for zepto uh, again cross pla- cross platform uh, marketing benefit and i also tried you know let's say go zero's exclusive ice cream right so hmm. I feel it's a very, very interesting campaign all around. Um, in fact, they also partnered with a few influencers uh, to promote this campaign. A uh, lot of content done around on social media for this. So very interesting sort of campaign overall. Uh, reminds me of uh, of of another very offbeat campaign that uh, we had covered in, in another video uh, on Mokobara, where Mokobara pat- uh, partnered with uh, Indigo to actually promote, uh, you know, sort of their bags and highly, highly recommend you check out uh, that video as well. It's it's our, one of the most popular videos on our channel. So maybe you could go and check that out later as well. And touching on the last thing, which, uh, which uh, GoZero had actually tried out is a sampling campaign. Now, uh, essentially just to break this down for you. Now, the normal, you know, average cost of uh, marketing, you know, on a keyword like uh, ice cream um, on platforms like Zepto, etc. The CPC or cost per click comes around 20 to 25 rupees. Again, Whoa. this is not cost per conversion, but cost per click, right? Simply someone clicking through the ad, um, right? And with a product priced at literally 125 right? It might, might not make sense depending on the actual conversion conversion rates, which we don't currently know. But what GoZero had the guts to try out is during the IPL season, they went out and said that, you know what, look, uh, we're already spending like 20, 25 rupees for a CPC. Why not just send uh, the sample directly to a consumer uh, on a certain order purchase, which is, I think, like roughly 300, 350 rupees, right? So on a 350 rupees order purchase on Zepto specifically, they were actually sending out a sample to you. Uh, and this went out to almost 2.5 lakh you know, samples and a lot of appreciation for the brand uh, came in on that particular day. So I feel this is, it's just, this is another very interesting way to go above and beyond like your traditional marketing means, which is just like basic advertising to actually get the product directly to the consumer and get him, get him or her to experience that after which, you know, you know, your sales probably bumps up pretty well. And with that said, that's a wrap on today's episode of the ice cream market, as well as how guilt-free brands are disrupting the traditional players. Um, If you've liked our episode so far, we we run a lovely, lovely community called the Perspectify community. It's a WhatsApp group where uh, like-minded individuals in the marketing, growth, product, startup space are coming together to discuss a lot of things um, from, you know, uh, general debates on what's going on in the market, news updates, 
even hiring people for that matter right so i highly highly recommend if you have if you've heard this video so far you go and click the link in the description join the group and me and rakshit are there we'd love to hear from you and love to have a back and forth with you um with that said that's a wrap uh, take care have a lovely day bye Changing the time